Well, we are back at this property I introduced you to, and this garden has opportunities around every corner. Our friend Carolyn Gracie is going to join us, and I can't wait to hear her ideas for this garden. But before we start gardening, we're going to do a nice cleanup and prune. So we're going to get down to work today. So we're going to transplant this oak leaf hydrangea and I could really use a shovel about now. Hey, hey so perfect glad you're timing. here. Thanks so much for having me out here today. What a beautiful place. Oh, I am thrilled to have you here with your creative juices. We oh, need you. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. And first things first, I heard you say that you want to move this oak leaf hydrangea, right? I do. I think it's going to be happier in a more shady location and something that has more space. Yeah, hydrangeas don't like it in the bright hot sun. And I think you're absolutely right. Do you have a spot picked out? I sure do. I already dug a big hole, Okay. as you told me, about okay. twice the size that I need for the root ball that is existing already. Exactly right. So the hole's ready. Okay. Well, and I just want to remind the folks too, before we get started, if you have plants that don't look so happy, it's probably because maybe they're in the wrong spot. You thought it looked good at first, but it's either too much sun, too much water, maybe not enough of those two. Maybe they've outgrown their space. It's not a bad thing to move them. You won't hurt the plant if you do it right. So again, remember, be sure to dig up the entire root ball and then move it to a spot in a hole that's about twice as big as what you just dug up. Definitely. Okay, you ready? I am. Okay. So let's dig this up. We are here in what used to be the greenhouse and now it's a pretty wonderful cutting garden. Well, it has the potential anyway. Yeah, it looks like it's been kind of like the secret garden forgotten about for a while. Yeah. I can see where they used to have lots of growing things, maybe some um, some beans right here or mm -hmm. some, some peas. And obviously these were tomatoes. They were. And I think we can do some really cool things in here, like maybe some broccoli and cabbage. Mm -hmm. Lettuce would be awesome. Absolutely. Too. Just like Mr. McGregor's without the bunny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think too, they've already got this raised bed, which is kind of the thing right now. Look, it's already yep. been in here for a long time. So we've already got that part done. Yeah, so I think all we need to do is give it a good cleanup, get rid of the old tomatoes, maybe weed it in here. And yeah. I really think a good topsoil is going to help grow the vegetables that we're thinking of. I love that. I can just picture this all filled with vegetables. Why don't we just get started? I think we can start with removing the old tomato cages mm -hmm. and weeding it and getting rid of some of the dead wood here too. Some of these cages are kind of in here. Hand it to me. I think it's time to get my break. All right. <laughs> So Carolyn, this soil looks pretty good, but it yeah. sure isn't going to hurt to add some new nutritious soil. No, I think adding a, a couple of inches of garden soil is important because not only will it add more nutrition back into the current soil, but it tends to retain moisture a little better. It does. So your plants, yep. especially when you first plant things, they need to be watered a little more and, and their roots need to have access to water in the soil. So. Yep. So that's a good idea. I like to get some topsoil mm -hmm. and add some compost in it. Okay. And that's going to give these plants a really good head start. Got it? Oh, I think I do. We'll just right. dump that in. Okay. And let me pull it up and we'll rake it out and okay. smooth it out. Oh. All right. So um, again, depending on what kind of soil that you have, uh, especially if you live someplace where it has clay or a lot of rocks in the soil, that's going to determine how much more of this that you're going to add to the soil that you've got. Carolyn, this is great little cottage. Oh, I but know. But I really feel like we could do more in the front here. I feel like these bushes are way too big and just 
heavy looking. Well, anytime you have an evergreen, like, you know, a boxwood or a holly, it's nice to either keep them trimmed or to make space. See, here's two together, yeah. where if you took one out, you could have a space for something flowery, like hydrangeas. That's what or, I'm talking about. Or, you know, even like that spirea next to you, which gets flowers part of the year, but there's too much green altogether. Yeah, I want it to look cottagey. Mm -hmm. I love the hydrangea, maybe a climbing hydrangea mm -hmm. on this stone. <gasps> Wouldn't that be what about a window box? Love it. So if, love it. If we remove the big greenery, yes. now we have space for flowers under the window. Because look at these fabulous plantation shutters, and they're adorable. I just love this whole sort of equestrian look of the cottage. I think that is the answer to my prayers. Love it. So Carolyn, there's lots of pruning to do, mm -hmm. like this rose bush really needs a real good cutting back. There's lots of dead wood on this and we just want to get rid of that dead wood from the harsh winter and also any of these uh, tips here you just want to get the dead wood off of them as well it's right gonna... when you're when you're pruning a rose bush uh, just remember the more you prune it back the more it's going to fall fill in and get fluffy uh, and you know whenever you trim it you want to kind of trim it just above where the new growth is coming in uh, also, if you need to cut it down even further, that's okay. It's not going to yeah. hurt it. No, the roses are really hardy to, to pruning. They will take a real harsh prune and mm -hmm. they'll still come back with lots of flowers. So go ahead and prune it for shape too. And then after you're done with that, be sure and add a nice rose fertilizer. Yes. Uh, you know, of course, different roses do different things. Your shrub roses, you can keep them in whatever shape you'd like. Uh, some of the bare root roses tend to be, you know, the ones that have more big flowers and have you know those really unique shapes yeah so it just depends on the space that you want to fill but roses really are not as difficult to take care of or to grow as has always been talked about i, I don't think anyway i I've don't always, either just make sure they're in a lot of sunshine right yep So Carolyn, what do you think we should do along the wall of the garden here? Because well, it's so light and pretty. This grass right here actually should have been trimmed back last fall. Yeah. Uh, so underneath it's going to look pretty nice once it grows back in. However, you've got peonies over here. Yeah, and I love peonies. Maybe, so, maybe we could move the grass. Yeah, maybe transplant the grass to the other side of this vegetable bed. Oh, nice. Then we'll get the movement of the grass in the background. I yeah. like that. And then in here, something more cottagey. I'm thinking maybe some lilacs. Love lilacs. Yeah. Nothing is more cottagey than peonies and lilac. And lavender. Oh, I can smell it. Which does double duty because it keeps most of the bugs away too. That's true. And if we have lavender, we should also do some roses. Let's do it. I think it's going to look gorgeous. of the yard is somewhere I see entertainment. Mm -hmm. I love the well over here yeah. that we could decorate. Mm -hmm. But this time of year, we can get out and clean it up and get ready for all that fun. It's amazing how much more you have a vision when things are cleaned up. Oh, you can see yeah. the space. So Absolutely. It's mainly just leftover stuff from last fall, really. Yeah, it is. It's still on the ground. Just some sticks and debris. And, and if we get rid of it, We'll be able to enjoy the spring and summer so much more. I'm thinking, you know, you could even do like um, a pretty little uh, set of Adirondack chairs, maybe a fire pit over here. Oh, I love that. But leave some space still to play a little croquet and oh, horseshoes. Oh, family and friend time. Yes. I love that. Maybe some I knew I needed darts. you. I've got it all in my garage. Okay. I'll be over. Let's do it. Okay. Carolyn, we talked a lot about the different areas that we want to do in the garden, and I just love your ideas. Oh my gosh, I love yours too. Will you come over to my house and share some of yours with me? I would me? love to. We'll do that next after we're all done over oh, here. Awesome. And let, me, to do let it. me know when you're going to start doing some more of the work so I can come over and help, okay? Oh, you are the best. Oh, I, I can't love wait. You. At the end, let's have a big party. Ah, deal. I had an incredible day with Carolyn Gracie where we started to clean up the garden. We still have plenty of cleanup to go, 
But in the next coming week, Sam Lemhenny from PHS, which is the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, is going to join us and give us his ideas on how to build it and what to do to make this garden extra special in the design. I can't wait to share it with you, and this garden is just gonna get better and better and keep on growing. Mm -hmm.